Ladies and gentlemen, Halloween is upon us, and what fun would it be if I didn't build the spookiest team possible? So we're gonna see if we can get this theme team to put in some work, whereas my opponent actually also has a pretty scary team, just kind of in a different way. Um, they have some very difficult Pokemon to deal with, mainly the Clefable, uh, you know, Crawdon, there's the Gliscor, Gengar, and it's looking like it's gonna be a pretty good one, so let's go trick-or-treating. So my plan right from the start is actually expecting them to lead off with the Gliscor to get up the Stealth Rock, so I decided to toss out Young Stitch, Lilo's nowhere to be found, but I'm ready to get some prankster bullshit going, and they actually end up tossing out the Crawdon, which is fine, I'm willing to just go right for the will of Wisp regardless. Um, with my prankster ability, I'm able to go first on any non-attacking moves, however, my dude says, hey, I have one of these little goblin fellows as well, and my will o wisp of course, does not work. Now, this is a mechanic that's actually pretty interesting, you actually cannot use prankster on other dark type Pokemon, it's a little bit of a... I think lesser known side effect of Prankster. Our Halloween pranks are already failing, which is not a good sign. But I just decided to go for the knockoff. He actually tried to trick me that Iron Ball. Uh, but I say, you know what, you can you can keep that shit. And then I say, you actually can't keep that. You can just get that shit out of there. So, uh, Iron Ball, nowhere to be found. As now he just decides to go for the Sucker Punch, which does work since it's just an attacking move. And I decide to just stay in and go for some more knockoffs. Um, the bad news is, Sableye versus Sableye is kind of a shit matchup because we both likely have. Uh, recover, which with Prankster is just gonna be able to go first, and we're gonna kind of get to, we're gonna go nowhere fast with this shit, so I figure, you know what, I do actually have another little Halloween trick up my sleeve, and let's see if we can get this to work. So I bring in Cacturn, the Scarecrow comes in, Sucker Punch does not work, and I'm gonna try to bait the Prankster. It's so enticing to be able to try to click Will-O-Wisp, however, I of course am Dark-type, and you cannot use Prankster against me. My dude is probably like, why is this Cacturn immune to Will-O-Wisp? The fuck kind of... Cacturn is this guy working with, but that allows me to get up a free substitute, and now I can start Swords Dancing, which is amazing. He can't even taunt me because of uh, Prankster failing against Dark-type. I'm, th I'm thinking maybe he realizes this by now. He's probably hitting Google up like, what the fuck? What is this cactus made of? I don't know what's going on here. Um, but that's one way to counter Sableye pretty well, is just to have a nice solid Dark-type that can set up. So. Now he's like, okay, I thought this Sableye was a prankster. Turns out the dude is pranking himself. He probably is like, this Sableye is broken. I'm gonna put him back in the old pocket and try him out for later. Um, and he actually decides to switch into the Gliscor here. So he comes in on a nice plus two seed bomb. It does turn out to be defensive, so it is able to live it in red, but I am still behind my substitute, so the beanbag is doing what it needs to do. And even though I know Cacturn can't really fully sweep the team at this point, I can at least break some holes and be able to, uh, you know, just open up the team for later. So. Uh, he actually ends up going for the U-turn, decides, you know, maybe this thing might be a little bit useful. With that poison recovery, it's actually going to be in pretty good shape after, like, two more turns. And that's a damn shame, because I hate that fucking thing, and I would love for that guy's score to be dead. Uh, but now he decides, he's like, you know what, I'm bringing back in the goblin. He actually just kind of brings it in for death fodder at this point, uh, because a seed bomb kills it, and he's truly just given up on Sableye. Which, in my opinion, is hilarious because for a Halloween battle, my dude feels like he's been trick-or-treating and got nothing but tricks at this point. So, <laughs> we're gonna try to keep that energy going. Now, he gets a free switch, decides to go into Gengar. Now, I assume he knows I have the Sucker Punch, although pretty much every Gengar you see is going to be Focus Sash. So, I just decide to go for the Sucker Punch here. Even if I can knock that thing down to one, I can take care of it later. Which is exactly what happens here. It does live with that Sash. And he kind of gets rid of my Sucker Punch before just knocking my ass out here. But that's fine. Thorny Tits really did what it needed to do. Being able to like break the wall of that Gliscor and not nah, break the Focus Sash on the Gengar is exactly what we were looking for here. So Gengar does take me out, but this allows me a little revenge switch in. I have a couple different options. My main kind of killer of this Gengar that I'm keeping in the back is going to be my Choice Scarf, Miss Maggie. But I can't quite go into that yet. Um, he's gonna know that it's Choice Scarf and it's gonna be able to outspeed, then he can just go into Clefable. So I decide instead to go into young Bruce Wayne, and I'm just gonna go right for the U-turn, kind of expecting a switch. At this point in the match, I'm really trying to conserve my poison types, and the main reason is because of that Clefable just looming in the back. I, I really need, um, kind of both Haunter and this Crobat to be able to take care of that thing later. So going for the U-turn gets me nice solid momentum as they end up bringing in the Kangaskhan. Now I haven't played against the Kangaskhan since fucking Nom. So I'm not sure exactly what this thing is going to be working with. I do know, though, that these things do carry the Scrappy ability, which allows them to hit Ghost types with normal type moves, which is absolutely unfortunate considering my team is like half Ghost. So I'm thinking my best option is to bring in Spiritomb. And the main reason for that is because I'm defensive physically, plus I can get a nice Will-O-Wisp off on this thing and kind of render it useless. So. They do go for the fake out, it's always weird as hell to see ghost types being hit by normal moves. And also, can we shout out the little baby absolutely vibing in the pouch over there? My dude is just chilling. 
Uh, so he ends up going for a last resort. Now that is quite the interesting moveset. Um, just basically carrying two moves, Fake Out and Last Resort. Luckily, Spirit Tomb is defensive as shit, and I'm able to take uh, that Last Resort just barely to the point where now I can luckily burn this thing. So, shout out to my dude for using the Fake Out Last Resort Kanga. That's a strategy you generally see with Ambipom, except Kangaskhan's way cooler, so I gotta, I gotta give respect where it's due. So, um, I know I'm pretty much gonna go down here, there's nothing I can really do, and I kind of have to just waste my Spirit Tomb here on just getting a burn on this thing. But, uh, totally fine. Um, Wonder Tomb does go down, and I did what I needed to do, and that's basically just limit the amount that this thing can uh, can damage me with. Although I do have a couple of faster Pokemon, so I'm just not sure how bulky this thing is going to be. And I'm thinking my best option is actually going to be the Sableye. Now the reason for that is because I know I can take at least one of these last resorts. I can go for a knockoff, likely get rid of its Silk Scarf, which is I imagine the item it's carrying, so it's going to take a little bit of that damage off. And then I also have the Prankster Recovery and then kind of stall this thing out with the burn damage. So I go for the knockoff, I do take a nice chunk from that last resort, and I do get rid of that silk scarf it's wearing. So you're looking a little less fashionable here, mama, but uh, luckily I was able to kind of limit the amount this thing could do to me. This thing could have been a real issue if I wasn't able to get a burn on it. Uh, but Sableye luckily could have come in in Prankster will o -Wisp it if I did miss with the Spirit Tomb. So now I decide to go for the Recover, wiggle my weird little fingers at him, say, you will never get this. And uh, I can basically stand here all day, recover as the burn kind of finishes this thing off. Uh, they end up going for another last, last resort here. It's doing way less than Recover can do. Um, but I'm thinking to myself, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to go down like this. There's, I don't really have a reason to just stall this out and waste time because I don't play that stall shit. <laughs> and um, I actually realized that Sableye's not super useful for the rest of the match here. It would be kind of nice to keep it around uh, for some Will-O-Wisp action, but there's not really much that I need to burn. So I decided instead I'm just going to take another last resort, go for a knockoff here. It actually does put it into range where the burn is going to kill it. So it actually worked pretty nice in my favor. I was kind of just accepting the fact that Sableye was going to go down here, but actually works out nice and now I can no matter what get another pranks to recover going because Sableye is the absolute most annoying ghost type in the world and I'm actually taking advantage of him here so now you get to free switch into the the buff ass Zubat over here and I'm thinking you know what I might as well go for the recover I don't know what this thing wants to do to me I doubt he's gonna set up the late game stealth rock he's probably gonna try to go for like a knockoff of his own um, but he actually ends up going for the Earthquake. Now after the recovery, it's looking like it's going to put me right to the same range. And I can't really outspeed this thing and kill it. If I had Sucker Punch, that would be really nice. But I also don't want this thing to stay in here, suck up his poison health, and just end up being an absolute menace later. So I decided i got to make a play here. And if he's going to keep clicking Earthquake, I can go into Haunter and absolutely spook the shit out of my dude. Now the one great benefit about using Haunter over Gengar is that I do still have access to the Levitate ability, and I can switch into Earthquakes all day. So Gengar would be getting nerfed as hell and not having access to Levitate, but Haunter's still cool and scary, so I figure that's actually, it worked out in my favor. So now I am faster, I can absolutely just fire a Shadow Ball off at this thing. He can't really switch into anything, his best switching would be Clefable, but then has to deal you know, with sludge bombs all day. So the Gliscor does go down, luckily, a vampire looking ass uh, is taken care of, and now it's just basically seeing what he wants to go into against Haunter. He ends up bringing in Crawdont here, and this is actually pretty interesting. So he has access to Aqua Jet. Now if he's Choice Banded and Aqua Jet kills me, if he's not Choice Banned, it doesn't. And I'm thinking I have to stay in here and kind of roll the dice. So I go for the Sludge Bomb, turns out he does not go for the priority, which means he's not Choice Banded, but it does mean instead that he is Focus Sash. So my dude is just straight up running double Focus Sash, which is really difficult for my team, considering I don't have Stealth Rock up. But uh, he ends up going for the knockoff instead, and that was really lucky that he wasn't Banded with the Aqua Jet, because uh, that would have killed. But I think a, an Aqua Jet from a non-Choice Banded Cronaut does like 80% to Haunter, so I was actually in a pretty good position there. But that actually is perfect, because now I can go into... Stitch, and I'm thinking to myself, all I gotta do is go right for the Prankster Will-O-Wisp, and it goes before priority, and I should be okay, I'm fine with this thing dying, but I am also an idiot when it comes to Prankster, and that actually does have a higher priority than me, which actually makes a lot of sense, and I've definitely known that, but I just make myself a nice little misplay there, and I just give, I just basically throw that crowd on a bone, I say, hey, just here, here you go, this might be satisfying for you, um, and so that's, you know, really annoying, but I go into my last ditch effort that's my best option against the Crawdon, and that 
ladies and gentlemen, is the absolute mustard colored legend. Now, this thing is choice scarf and it's built to be able to outspeed stuff like Gengar. So I know that I can take one Aqua Jet if it decides to go for it here. Actually opts to go for the knockoff instead in case I, in case I tried to get cute and get substitutes or something like that, I suppose, and like nasty plots. Uh, but that does take care of the Crawdont, and now I'm really hoping that he doesn't know I'm Choice Scarf, which he shouldn't because it's not the most common set. So he decides to go into Gengar, which is of course the faster ghost, and he's looking, he's smiling, he's like, this is just an easy matchup for your boy. But the Scarf allows me to do exactly what this thing is designed to do, and I do outspeed the Gengar, which is great. Because he could have gone into Clefable, but he just saw the easy kill with the Gengar, or at least forced a switch there. So seeing Maggie take care of the Gengar is extremely satisfying, because I was kind of saving that for the whole map, so it kindly it finally came to fruition, and you love to see it. So they are now down to one last Pokemon, but unfortunately for me, it's the most annoying-ass pink blob of all time. And... Of course, I do have to switch here. I don't want to stay in and go for Shadow Ball in case this thing starts to set up, which I imagine it's going to do. So I have to go into Crobat, who's also been saved specifically for this Clefable here, and it goes for a Cosmic Power. And I'm like, oh, Jesus. I do not need this thing to be bulkier than necessary, and this is really bad for me. So it gets that plus one in defense and special defense, but I'm thinking, you know what? All I got to do is go for the Taunt here, not allow it to set up any more defense boosts. And as long as it's not carrying any coverage for Crobat, we might have ourselves a chance here. So he does try to Cosmic Power. I say, you cannot do that shit. And now I just have to start firing off Sludge Bombs. Even at plus one special defense, I should be able to do pretty decent damage here. It does close to half, not quite, but now it comes down to what coverage does it have against uh, <laughs> against my bat? And it actually ends up being Flamethrower, which is amazing, because that does not even scratch my boy. Crobat is a thick ass lad, and we will not be going down to no fairy. So actually interesting to note that he had both Gengar and Clefable on this team, got the shadow version of Clefable. Um, but one more Sludge Bomb puts it in range to where I can take it out nice and easily, as long as he doesn't get a super ultra mega crit with the flamethrower, which I am able to live. And then one more Sludge Bomb is going to take care of it. Now it's important to note that if I was not carrying Taunt on, <laughs> on my Crobat, uh, this could have gone a completely different direction. So he shakes off the Taunt, but it is too late, my pink chewed gum ass looking friend and the Sludge Bomb does take care of it. So that is going to be the end of the spookiest battle of all time. Um, and I uh, hope that you guys enjoyed. I had a lot of fun with this one. It's always fun to try to use some theme teams, and Halloween's a good time. So thank you guys very much. Make sure to like the video if you enjoyed, and I will see you later. Peace out.